Hello and welcome to the Anatomy of a Leader with me, Maria Vorostovsky. I'm the founder and CEO of HVO Search, working at the intersection of creativity, retail, and digital. Each month, I discover more about founders, investors, CEOs, chairmen, and women, how they succeeded, how they failed, and what they learned along the way. Today, I have Jessica Blackler uh, with me from Jekka Black. Um, so welcome. Thank you Thank so you. much for coming to talk to us at HBO Search. I first met you at a breakfast that I hosted, mm -hmm. which was bringing together founders of beauty brands, investors, uh, CEOs. And we were talking about the beauty industry and how the customer is changing and the shopping habits are changing. And you provided some very interesting insights. Yeah. And... Um, and so, yes, yeah, so I was really impressed with your story, you know, how you went from being a makeup artist to then doing prosthetics in film and then to founding your own cosmetics brand. Um, so can you tell us who you are, your business yeah. and, um, and how you got mm -hmm. to where you are today? Hello, I'm Jessica Blackler, founder of Jacka Black, a gender free and vegan makeup brand mm -hmm. that started by myself offering makeup lessons to transgender women. I started my career in film and TV, working as a makeup artist, and then I went on to do my clients, um, and that became um, very popular, my services, and I then was inspired by my clients to create a makeup brand that overlooks gender and celebrates individuality. I went from a few clients to a hundred clients quite quickly and I realized that actually what I was offering was quite unique mm. and then I started to build a brand and a product around my clients mm -hmm. um, and we launched last year and um, it's been it's been amazing like it's been it's going very well and we were taken on by L'Oreal Innovation amazing last year and um, we've expanded into retailers and there's been distribution and Around, around the world so it's going fantastically well amazing yeah. <laughs> yeah. and um and what inspired you what inspired you to 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 do this so my clients i the, the studio that i used to do the makeup um, lessons in was a safe space it acted as somewhere where people would come and they wouldn't have to worry about being judged mm. um, for for who they are so i really found that after a while the reason why i was so popular because I did offer something different, the safe space and an environment where people felt comfortable. Mm. And obviously I was good at the makeup, but it was more of the fact that I was open to a, um, this audience. So my clients really inspired me to then go and create a brand that really concentrated on them because this mm -hmm. is what they needed. And the feedback that I had mm. was, um, was that. Um, so Jessica, you speak with a lot of passion. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what do you love most about what, what you do? So the creative side of the, the business I enjoy the most, and that's mm. where obviously being a makeup artist, but before that I was very much into art um, mm. and I was in prosthetics, so it was very like creative and um, artistic. So the, the creative side being the products and the brands, that's what I enjoy. Mm -hmm. And then that it really is where my passion kind of comes through more mm. um, than other kind of day-to-day -day mm. stuff that you have to do when you're running business. Mm. Would you say you're a creative person? Yes, for sure. <laughs> that is me. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I often find that with kind of creative people that mm -hmm. sometimes they can be a little bit chaotic or a little bit unstructured. Yeah. I don't know if that's you, but, mm -hmm. um, well, I don't know. Is, is that you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's, it, it is... It, it's weird because I'm creative, but I'm also mm. very organized. Mm. Um, and the way that my mind works is I have to almost put things into boxes and mm. it's very much like a to-do list. Um, yeah. So no, I'm actually quite structured and mm. I have to be because mm. I ran and started this business alone um, mm. up until quite recently where you can build a team and stuff, but actually I needed to have that structure to my day and the structure mm. to, to the business. And otherwise... Um, it wouldn't have been um, a success. Mm. Um, so do you have um, like a daily routine or something that you do every single day? Well, not really, because I find mm. that every day is very different. Mm. Um, but one thing I do make sure is that I do something for myself each day. So mm -hmm. whether that be go to the gym or listen mm. to a podcast that I want to listen to or mm. catch up with a friend over dinner, that is something that I do for myself mm. rather than the business because... 
actually having your own business, as you know, is more of a lifestyle yeah. than a job. Mm. So you need to make sure that you're doing something. Well, you yourself. are the leader. You're the one yeah. who is having to to kind of put yourself out there and do everything. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, this idea that you don't look after yourself and don't have that self-care. Yeah. And then you're not really going to be giving your all to your business. No, exactly. And, have, and you just said you've started by yourself. So, mm-hmm. you know, having to carry that all the time is, you know, it's a big deal. So yeah, yeah, yeah. As a business owner, I feel, you know, very much the same way yeah. where, you know, you have to, you have to kind of take time for yourself. Otherwise, you just don't have enough to give. No, no. And I think that's a really positive message for, you know, for your brand and for yeah. your business too. Um, I mean, what's, what's the biggest challenge for your business now? We, um, we have a, uh, like, we have challenges every entrepreneur has challenges mm-hmm. each day and you do overcome them quite um when you just have to you have to find a solution and mm-hmm. that's actually quite fun sometimes mm-hmm. challenge, being given a challenge and, and facing it and, but actually the challenge I guess for us right now is probably um getting the distribution right and mm-hmm. um, it's quite difficult for a small brand because you need to make sure that if you go through a third party distributor whether that be a retailer or wholesaler mm-hmm. you need to still get your brand message across mm-hmm. when you're quite early on because obviously you're so small and people don't necessarily know about your brand so you need to make sure that that end customer is fully <clears throat> aware of your brand message and who you are um so i feel like that's quite a common challenge in lots of smaller brands mm. is really defining your message mm. and making sure you get it across to the right people mm. so yeah and what is it about that your business that you feel is really needed for the world? So from my clients, I've learned a lot. Um, so the makeup lessons used to sometimes last about three hours long. So I got to know a lot of my clients well. Like, mm. you know, and it, and again, like going back to what I said earlier, it was a safe space. So lots of my clients came and felt like they could come here and be comfortable and they weren't accepted in the outside world. And that's where I think my the brand is needed, is Jack and mm. Black is needed to actually um, kind of work with a, with, with a group that is normally overlooked by the beauty mm. industry. Um, so we offer products like beard shadow coverage um, how, and then contour kits that tell you how to feminize the face. And this is something that's mm. never really discussed in other brands. Mm. Um, so that's why I think we needed is to, mm. to to empower that group of people, but to also empower and break down the stigma behind brand um, behind makeup, and mm. it shouldn't only be for women; it should be for for everyone. For, for everyone, everyone. Mm. Needs to wear it. I think it's interesting when you're talking about being kind of overlooked, yeah, um, and overlooking, you know, certain segment, a certain demographic, a certain type of person. I mean, have has there been a moment in your life where you felt that you were overlooked? And, and um, what happened there? Not, not necessarily. I think when I started the business being so young, mm-hmm. I felt maybe it was a challenge again that I had and maybe felt overlooked um, in the fact that I didn't have 30 years of experience mm-hmm. behind me and worked for massive corporates. But mm-hmm. actually you have to make these things work for you. Um, mm-hmm. And I made that work for me. I made the fact that I was young, not a negative, but a positive mm. um, offering that I had, um, just because I'm in a generation that obviously is very um, accepting of diversity and um, and doesn't really put people in boxes, I guess. And um, we, we are that as a brand, so it makes sense for me to mm-hmm. also be in that generation, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah. I totally understand about your, you know, challenges of, you know, coming into the business when when you're so young and mm-hmm. having, you know, feeling that you don't have that experience. But yep. I think for an entrepreneur, it's this idea of like, well, how do you find things out? How do you learn them? How do you react to what's happening in the industry? You know, learning from the real world, so to speak. And I think yeah. that's what makes that distinction. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about some of the lessons that you have learned? Yeah, so we have had some um, pushbacks in, in, our, in our business, like most businesses mm. do when they start out, especially when you're young and brand, mm. you, need to, you need to accept that these pushbacks will happen. Mm-hmm. And um, it can be business changing, life changing. And, mm-hmm. and actually what I've learned is the mindset that you have to have 
when you're approaching a big challenge mm. or problem um, is to actually embrace it and, mm-hmm. and, and failure is also part of success mm. and to get the mindset correct is actually quite a challenge personally mm-hmm. because I'm very attached to the brand. Mm-hmm. It's my name, mm-hmm. it's my brand and sometimes to have it arms length is actually difficult when mm-hmm. you're still very small. So um, yeah, that's what I've learned that's probably the biggest lesson that I've learned is actually mm-hmm. your mindset towards mm. the challenges that you will have and to not take it personally, but also just accept that it will happen. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's really, that's really key. I think this idea yeah. of a mental preparation and having to like set yourself is, is really important Yeah. because, you know, that's something that will completely set you apart from, from everybody else. Yeah. Um, and also make it much more, energizing and you know something that you can really continue doing on a uh, long-term basis because yeah. it's a, a long haul <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and what advice would you give to someone who is aspiring to do what you do yeah so I would probably say patience is really important mm-hmm. um for me like that's an amazing thing to come from somebody <laughs> so young <laughs> I know but yeah um patience is a key because actually, um, when I was starting out, I was like so excited about the brand, mm-hmm. and I've met so many other entrepreneurs that are so excited about this stuff. It's the first few like you know uh, months or years mm-hmm. can be really exciting part of the brand, obviously. But it actually, it's really it's really important to always just go back to why you started the brand, mm-hmm. um, and not to go with every opportunity that comes mm-hmm. your way. Um, and when I say patience, obviously you have to be patient with um, with, with, with the, your, your brand's growth, but also you need to be patient in the fact that if it's not what you set out to do, you just don't do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like some entrepreneurs are very driven for the end goal, but they start kind of missing their mm-hmm. um, purpose mm-hmm. and they just kind of take every opportunity that comes and then they're not really looking at the wider picture. Mm-hmm. Um because that's also another sort of mental mental thing that I've learned is that back to words like it, you have to focus on the bigger picture mm-hmm. when you're an entrepreneur because most of the time you're kind of focusing on the smaller. You're so in it. Mm. Yeah, so in it. Sometimes it's difficult to look at the bigger picture mm. and kind of sit back and think, oh, am I going mm-hmm. in the right direction? And if you're not, be patient for those opportunities to come your way. How do you do that? I mean, how do you it's, kind of... It is difficult. Mm. I actually have mentors who I work with that mm-hmm. help probably two hours a month mm-hmm. sit down and discuss what, what our challenges are, but also we're always referring back to that picture. Mm-hmm. Um, and and actually writing down. I mean, it sounds very basic, but writing down what the end goal is mm-hmm. and what the bigger picture is, and what you want to achieve with this business, and then constantly referring back to that. Mm. But taking that time out of the business, mm-hmm. and instead of working in it, work mm-hmm. on the business. Mm. That makes sense. Mm. Working on the strategy and the bigger picture is really important. Mm. Part. I think this idea of writing things down—it's such a simple and such a yeah straightforward and it's like well that's completely common sense but it's incredible how often that doesn't happen no I know and you're just so in it you're just busy. on a roll and you're busy and you know you're just kind of executing rather than actually stopping and thinking about yeah. it and it's amazing that you you are so aware of needing that inter- like yeah. external input from the mentors um is there anyone that you that really inspires you, a person that you look up to or your idol or yeah? Yeah, so I have lots of like business mm. um idols, people that have done things that I think have done really well. Um obviously there's like the entrepreneurs that are really mm-hmm. successful that I obviously admire, um, the likes of like Joe Malone and people mm. like that that have built brands alone and I always aspire to those who have done it almost as a sole founder Mm -hmm. because it's very different to them having a partner founder you know it's like Mm -hmm. those it is a very different challenge so yeah so so actually I look up to lots of entrepreneurs but actually the people that inspire me and inspire the brand are a lot to do with the clients that Mm -hmm. I've had and um yeah that's that's the massive part Mm -hmm. of the inspiring part do you see yourself really running your business 
yourself or could you see yourself like maybe like a, a Bobby Brown who sold her business to Estee Lauder and continued working there for, you know, 20 odd years? Yeah, um, I can see myself for a while running the business mm -hmm. ourselves and um, I think it's really important that I have like um, some input in the brand because mm -hmm. again, you started it. Yeah, it's yeah. named after me and it's very much my established family story. So it would be ridiculous for us to pass it on to mm. someone else at this stage. Mm. Um, but who knows, you know, in the future mm. what, what would happen. What it brings. Yeah. Mm. So what would you say would be kind of like the, the key three things that got you to where you are today? <laughs> <laughs> the key three things. Um... So I would say my uh, network, people mm -hmm. that I, I mean, I don't have any close family um, or close friends that are in this industry. So mm -hmm. I very much built my network myself. And so the mentors, that is so, so important mm -hmm. to me to have a board of mentors and people mm -hmm. that I can really um, rely on for, for, the, for their experience. Because going back to the thing of, being the young entrepreneur, you do need that um, support around you. You, mm -hmm. you can't do it ex exactly on your own. Yeah. So actually, they're a massive part of um, of the kind of success, I guess. Um, the other part is still always remaining as the customer is core of the brand, mm -hmm. and still being in touch with that customer group that we once had. So my clients were obviously the reason why I started it mm -hmm. and therefore they are still involved in the brand so I still speak with them regularly about products and whatever else so that'd be the second is clients and customers is, is, is core and then the third would probably be L'Oreal has been absolutely mm -hmm. amazing as well and um, that's helped me again look at the bigger picture but also have the knowledge of a massive brand that's done it very mm. successfully um, to maybe avoid problems in the business. Mm -hmm. um, so when... Shortcuts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because because product is um, sometimes difficult to get to do as mm -hmm. well. They have um, the knowledge of colours, steels, fabrics, or whatever. Mm -hmm. You simply wouldn't have that without, without their help. Mm -hmm. Strategy, like they, they know how to do that very mm -hmm. well. Um, well, they have exactly decades, yeah, decades so and they, decades of data and experience yeah. and understanding and learnings. Mm. Yeah, so definitely, L'Oreal has obviously been very helpful. Mm -hmm. And um, what what does being a leader mean to you? Hmm. Someone that um, obviously drives. Okay, right. Let me think about this. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just throwing out these questions out there. I'm just kind of like thinking out loud. So. Yeah. Um, what does a leader mean to me? Um, so a leader is someone probably that embraces the good as well as the bad, mm -hmm. um, and is someone that is positive, but also knows how to deal with challenges in the business. Mm -hmm. Um, and also someone that is in, in charge of every, I mean, how can I say it? Some, delegating. Some, yeah, delegating. Mm -hmm. yeah, some, some. Any habits that you would like to change? <laughs> yeah, so I need to start celebrating the small successes. Ah, yes, that, that old a, chestnut. <laughs> yeah, such a challenge yeah. for Because mm. you secure big retail mm. and you're like, and everyone's like, that's so exciting. Mm -hmm. And you're like, yeah, but I've been working on it for months. Mm -hmm. And it's the whole thing of, it's initially quite exciting, but then if you're in it, and like I said before, mm -hmm. if you're working on a small detail constantly, mm -hmm. um, it kind of phases out. And um, But I do actually need to start small, yeah, start, start celebrating the small. Mm -hmm. I think it's really key for the team as well, mm -hmm. especially as the team gets bigger. Yeah. This idea of, you know, really taking a moment to really, kind of solidify that feeling of success, yeah. which is what kind of compels you to keep going and, and doing more things, especially, you know, when it can be really difficult. So yeah. this, you know, this struggle um, and having that moment of like, yes, you know, we did it. Yeah, definitely. Um, no, is, definitely. Is, and I think that's 
that's something I didn't learn until much, much later. Yeah. I was the kind of person that just kind of like, okay, now what's the next thing and the next thing and the yeah. next thing? And it, it does become exhausting. So yeah. it's amazing that you think that way. And um, do you have a, a personal mantra? <laughs> I don't, but like mm. I said to you before, <laughs> this is something that I think is quite, quite inspiring. Mm. Um, if you don't start somewhere, you won't get anywhere. Mm. And I think yeah. that we started really small, but mm. like... We're getting somewhere. <laughs> Thank you so much Thank for you. coming to speak with us. It's been really wonderful to have you here and to learn your story and your lessons. And <laughs> you have a, a fantastic journey ahead of you. I think Thank you've you. got, you know, your head screwed on right. And, yeah. you know, you. I feel like you're saying all the right things to make you a massive success. So, um, thank again, thank you. And I wish you all the best. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks right. for having me. <laughs> thank you. So we did it pretty quickly, no?